system. So I started Resiliency Maps a couple of years ago with the very selfish idea that I wanted to know where to go when the next earthquake hit here in my hometown of San Francisco. This is an overview of what we do, uh, but the main thing is that, uh, Next slide, let's see. This is really the, the crux of it. Um, the thing is that disasters used to look like this. So it was a finite geographical event uh, that started and stopped and they were the same. The impact could be different in different parts of the world but a lot of the common sense advice about where you needed to go and what you should do scaled, it went across things. Um, but that was so last year, because with the COVID pandemic, it's not geographically finite, and we don't know when it's gonna end. And a lot of the really obvious common sense stuff doesn't make sense anymore in terms of telling people where they need to go. So the last thing you wanna do now is send people to crowded shelters, right? The other main problem that we noticed right away here in San Francisco, is that you have two problems. One with lockdown, which means a lot of public services are closed. All the public libraries, the homeless shelters, everything's closed. So we have 8,000 people in San Francisco who are homeless and they don't have any place to wash up. So the city has what they call pit stops and there were 23 of them before the pandemic and now they've added another 25 plus these portable hand-washing stations. But the problem is, um, how do you find them, right? Like that's the, that's the issue. So you can see these portable hand-washing stations, like I, I don't, you know, they're not that visible, they're not that tall, whatever. And this is what the Google map looks like. Uh, so you can see a couple of problems with this. One is that some of these even overlap each other. It's hard to know where they are. Uh, the city put these up very, very quickly. So they're not staffed 24 seven. So the only way that you can find out what's open is if you click on the panel on the right. And obviously that's a little bit problematic if you're either on mobile uh, or you're trying to print it. So we got the idea to sort of reprise what we had done. We've made some maps for community responders for the fire department here. And we just thought we we're gonna bust these out. They're gonna be very simple black and white maps. So we used public data from the city for the base map and uh, QGIS, which I don't know if anyone's had the chance to use the labeling, the new labeling mechanism, but it is pretty amazing. And this is what you have. This is more or less the same neighborhood, uh, but you can see you can see the hours and what, what's actually on offer. And you can print them out on any standard eight by 11 printer. So then um, we, I want to say we just went a little gorilla. This is so this is back in March, and we encouraged people, friends, family, everybody basically to print these out. And when they were out running essential errands, to just post them up. So here's one in the wild, and that is pretty much we we have been talking to the city, uh, our local supervisors, because we know this is all going to change in the winter. The structures are going to change, the amount is going to change, and maybe the facilities and the hours will change as well. So we're talking about making more foldable maps and other things that can be easily handed out, but that is basically the uh, crux of it. And yeah, and that's basically it. That's a, that's what I've got for today. We, like I said, we are working for other things because we don't really know when this is going to end and what kind of maps that people are going to need. But uh, I think the main takeaway is that you have to kind of hit that with a simple stick in a big way. Thanks. <laughs>